welcome to SRG TV's news for Thursday, October 14, 2021. I'm Triska Campbell with the details. St. Vincent's and the Grenadines has recorded four additional COVID-19 deaths, bringing the death toll from the viral illness to 42. The latest update provided by the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO Today, said six other deaths in COVID-19 positive patients are currently under investigation. The latest victims identified are a 77-year-old male who tested positive for COVID-19 on October 3, 2021 and died at home on October 10 of COVID-19 infection. A 61-year-old female who tested positive for COVID-19 on October 2 and was admitted to the COVID-19 ward at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital on October 5 and died on October 11, 2021 of COVID-19 pneumonia. The other two victims are another 61-year-old female who tested positive for COVID-19 on September 24th and died on October 11th while admitted to the COVID-19 ward at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital and a 79-year-old male patient who tested positive for COVID-19 on October 3rd, 2021 and died on October 13th. All were said to be unvaccinated. Meanwhile, 121 new COVID-19 positive cases were reported from 656 samples collected on Wednesday, October 6, resulting in a positivity rate of 18.4%. One of the new cases is said to be an entry screen in a fully vaccinated passenger from St. Lucia. Four of the cases were detected during exit screening, while all other cases were for contacts of known positive cases and persons seeking care. Nemo said 16 rapid antigen positive cases were reported from flu clinics and that there are currently 19 patients admitted to the COVID-19 uh, Argyle Isolation Facility. 16 are said to be unvaccinated, one partially vaccinated and two fully vaccinated. 34 patients were also admitted to the COVID-19 ward at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. 33 patients are unvaccinated and one partially vaccinated. 110 new recoveries were noted over the reporting period. 1,372 cases are currently active and 42 persons with COVID-19 have died. 4,217 cases of COVID-19 and 2,803 recoveries have been recorded in St. Vincent's and the Grenadines since March 2020. 112 passengers arrived on the inaugural Virgin Atlantic flight at the Argyle International Airport yesterday afternoon from Heathrow Airport in London. Some of the passengers were returning nationals and others tourists who say they are eager to explore the island. As we hear in this report, in light of the COVID-19 situation in the country, the visitors and returning nationals had to follow strict COVID-19 protocols at the Argyle International Airport hasn't it? Yeah, Everyone's been really friendly, it's been great. Especially on the flight because yeah. everyone from Barbados when it was singing. there was singing and dancing. They arrived to the beautiful sounds of Pan at the Argyle International Airport on board the Virgin Atlantic's A330-300 aircraft. This is the first trip to SVG for these excited tourists and they did not mind the COVID-19 protocols which are in full effect at all airports in SVG. The visitors say they learned about Destination SVG from brochures in the UK and already have a place in mind to spend the next three weeks while on island. Uh, we haven't got to see much of it, but we're staying in St Vincent for a few days and we're going to Bequa, so that'll be nice. We also caught up with the Vincentian National, who was happy to be back home. 100% better than it was. <laughs> and believe me, she have a long time ago, and we thank God sir, for doing it. You got only he who feels it knows it when you have to go Barbados and stick out and hang up. It's a direct thing now. Virgin Atlantic's country manager Hannah Swift said that SVG is leading in bookings to the Caribbean and is thrilled that they can bring tourists to the island. Pilot David of Virgin Atlantic said it was a seamless touchdown at EIE. Um, it was a wonderful landing coming in here. Um, the weather was great, uh, brilliant visibility and um, lovely to see all the scenery coming in here. One of the passengers commented that he hopes the twice weekly flights is sustainable. Fuel prices raising, it was not um, 
used by it's been sanctions on tourists and that may not last but let's hope it does. The A330-300 aircraft has a seating capacity of 237. The inaugural flight landed at AIA with 112 passengers, eight crew members, including the pilots. Of the crew was Vincentian Desmond Franklin. To be part of the inaugural flight coming to St Vincent and also, you know, to be representing my company as well as, you know, my, my other home. So what could be better? Many onlookers flanked the outskirts of the airport to witness the arrival of Virgin Atlantic, the first transatlantic flight to SVG since the operation of the international airport. Currently, the UK is considered as a very high-risk country for COVID-19 on the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment travellers list. As part of the protocols, persons coming from the UK must arrive at a negative PCR test and must again test on arrival at the AIE. Those who are fully vaccinated must quarantine for 48 hours in a hotel or guest house approved by the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Tourism. For SVG TV News, Larissa Pogslikid. On the first outbound flight from the Argyle International Airport to Heathrow in London were a number of elderly Vincentian travellers. Our news team spoke to some of the elated passengers who said that they waited a very long time for the flights to become a reality and that they were even more excited about being a part of history. Larissa Pugsley Kidd tells us more in this report. The hassle of in-transit flights is always difficult for everyone, particularly the elderly. However, on Wednesday, October 13th, the experience was made easy for those who got the opportunity and became part of history by being on the first outbound flight from the Argyle International Airport to Heathrow, London, on Virgin Atlantic Airlines. Esli Joseph waited patiently in the VIP lounge at the AIA before she was able to board the flight. Joseph said she waited years for this day and can't wait to be with her loved ones. Uh, to be quite honest, I've been waiting for a while because I've got children in England and not being very active. You know, it was difficult to get to England for about five years really and this gave me an opportunity to see uh, my great-grandchildren that I haven't seen. The elderly woman pointed out that due to her health problems it made it even harder for her to travel. I had a stroke and with the arthritis I cannot move around so a direct flight suits me very well and it's come at a very convenient time because as you're getting older, of course, you're not able to move about as freely as you would like. Another elderly traveller, Parnell Louis, said the direct flight has made it much easier for him to go to the UK to be with his family. Well, it's marvellous to know that because I, I travelled much time before, but I had to go to Barbados, Barbados and spend a holiday there and things like that. So this is wonderful for me. There were 60 outbound passengers, most of whom were elderly, on the inaugural flight of Virgin Atlantic Airlines to the AIA. Wednesday's inaugural flight by Virgin Atlantic to SVG marks the beginning of a twice-weekly service on Wednesdays and Sundays from London's Heathrow to the AIA. For SVG TV News, Larissa Pogsley Kidd. With more travellers expected on island in the coming weeks, Prime Minister Dr. Afghan Saus is encouraging all the staff at the Argyle International Airport and other ports of entry to get vaccinated. PM Gonsalves made the call at yesterday's news conference held to welcome the inaugural flight of Virgin Atlantic Airline to SVG. We have to have everybody who is working at Argyle International Airport from the cleaners, the security, all to the technical positions, to the highest level of the CEO, customs, immigration, everybody, you have got to be vaccinated. Come next week, three major international airlines will touch down at the Argyle International Airport, namely American Airlines, Virgin Atlantic and Air Canada Rouge. PM Gonsalves stated that other than AIA staff, other persons who offer services to tourists should also take the job. Because the traveler who is coming in, by and large, vaccinated. Because the numbers in the UK, I have read, Boris has done a pretty good job. You're about... 80 or so percent. Um, Joe Biden has done fairly well. And Trudeau ran an election on vaccinate. And they're doing quite well. And those are the major source markets. 
they want to know when the traveler the traveler wants to know that when he or she is coming when i come to argyle international everybody around here is vaccinated and when i go to the hotel the persons who are taking my bags the persons who are settling me into the room who are bringing me a drink we want to know everybody is vaccinated Schools in St. Vincent and the Grenadines will continue virtually as the island continues to see a spike in COVID-19 infections and death. In a telephone interview with SVG TV News today, Minister of Education Curtis King said that the blended approach that was scheduled to begin on Monday, October 18th, had to be pushed back. We have had to postpone once again the implementation of the phase two component. That is to say, the blended approach, that is the combination of online instruction with face-to-face -face instruction. That was scheduled to commence Monday the 18th of October. We have now been forced to push it back for a further two weeks. Again, we would make the necessary assessment, and if conditions are favorable, we will move to that blended format that we have been talking about. Now, we, we are going ahead naturally and, and prepare a proposal for the continuation and reopening of our schools. However, as I indicated, the increase in cases of COVID-19, as well as the increase in the deaths associated with the COVID-19 pandemic, basically have forced us to rethink and to make the adjustments. King noted that an analysis was carried out for the blended approach in a learning that was scheduled to begin on Monday uh, and that 17 primary schools and 13 secondary schools indicated that they were only able to accommodate online classes. Blended was concerned among the primary schools. 37 primary schools had indicated their readiness to implement the blended format. And among the secondary schools, 15 had indicated their readiness to implement the blended um, format. Only nine schools, all private schools, had indicated that given their size and all the conditions that we had identified, including um, one, a, a small population size, um, sufficient capacity to physical distance, um, be not being located in an area classified as a hotspot in, in, in relation to the COVID-19 cases. Um, they would have completed um, repairs to the school and where students were not required to commute using public transportation. After meeting those conditions, these schools were in a position to accommodate full face-to-face. -face. The education minister said over the next two weeks, the repair work on some schools will continue, noting that he still expects face-to-face -face instruction to take place for the school term. The of education will continue to work with other agencies to ensure that in this two weeks we continue to do what we have to do, whether it is in the case of sanitizing, whether it is in the case of fogging the schools, whether it is in the case of completing, because we do have some schools that still have not yet completed the physical return and, and BRACS is working hard, but we will continue to work with BRACS so that we could complete that process so that again, once the time is favorable, we could return to face-to-face -face instruction. And lecturer and psychologist at the St. Vincent's and the Grenadines Community College, Andrea Games Moes, said that online classes for students and teachers at all levels have been very challenging. However, there are some advantages. The new academic year for schools in SVG started on Monday, October 4th and was expected to incorporate a blended approach from next Monday. However, this has been pushed back for a further two weeks. On NBC Radio's face-to-face -face program uh, yesterday, Games Moore said that the main challenge of online teaching is, is, is maintaining focus. The structure is different to classroom face-to-face. Um, so some of the feedback and the research in terms of when we collect data we need for some of, of the children who are affected, one of the challenges is focus. So the whole idea of technology or even 
being online, when it was first introduced to children, it was more for pleasure and more for entertainment. But now they're supposed to be in a space where I don't have that contact with my peers. I'm not getting that energy from my teachers. So I'm looking at the screen for a, a length of period, and I have to then take in the information, understand this, which, which utilizes a different processing skill. So we're in the classroom, the students would sometimes get that interaction from the teacher. You know, so the teacher is realizing somebody is focusing. You don't have that in that online presence. So a lot of what the student has to do is just more or less adjust and adapt on their own. The lecturer and psychologist said that the online learning also places a lot of pressure on parents having to do their daily chores while at the same time monitor their children. It's putting a lot of pressure on parents because where they would have sent their children to school and the teachers would monitor and facilitate that process, they are now becoming secondary teachers in the home, monitoring classroom behavior, making sure that their child is okay, and that is also putting an additional burden on the family. And then when we look at teachers, in the classroom, a teacher could have more or less had control over what happens, what comes into the space, how they deliver their, their work. But now they don't have that control in the online presence um, as much as they were before. So there's a need now for more structuring, more focus, more attention that is also putting a burden. So it's Games Moa said, while as a lecturer, online teaching has its, ch its challenges, there are many advantages, especially in uh, time management. Managing time and movement, the online space provides an advantage. So then, if I have to go for a meeting, I have to leave home probably half an hour before, or have to get dressed or get you know, transport or drive, it cuts down that time. Yeah. On the other hand, it also decreases the social interaction. So some of the things that persons can do, because the thing is you, you can't feel energy from the online space. It's, it's based on how you create that energy. So some of the research shows, and even in my own experience, just having your cameras on has you to see the person's face. I think the challenge that you can't have any camera on is that you're seeing your own face in the space as well, which can be distracting. The Marikoi United Friendly Society Bunpan on Monday, October 11, 2021, presented two full scholarships and 21 bursaries to students uh, to assist in their secondary education. President of the Society Ricky Burnett handed over checks each valued at 1,400 EC to Steffi Gabriel Stapleton of the Kingston Government School and D'Angelo Jackson of the Kingston Preparatory School who entered the entered secondary school at the start of the 2021-2022 school year. Stapleton, who placed 29th for girls in the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment CPEA exams, is attending the girls' high school, while Jackson, who placed 56 for boys, is enrolled at the St. Vincent's Grammar School. The scholarships, which cover five years in secondary school and two years of tertiary education, also provides for payments of all examination fees. In addition to two full scholarships, one-off bursaries were given to 21 other students who were successful in the 2021 CPEA. In making the presentation, the president of the society encouraged the parents to help the students to be focused, highlighting the fact that online studies are now a part of the mode of classroom delivery. He also extended congratulations to the recipients who were not present as they were attending classes. To qualify for a Bunpan scholarship, the child or his or her parent must be a financial member of the society. The Marico United Friendly Society has to date awarded a total of 51 scholarships towards educational development of children in SVG. 17 police officers from course number 31 have achieved the significant milestone of 10 years of service in the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force. The officers commemorated their achievements on Friday, October 8th by, among other things, paying a courtesy call on Commissioner of Police Colin John, who presented them with the commemorative plaques. The commissioner used the opportunity to congratulate the 
officers on their achievements and for their service and dedication to the duty over the years. He implored uh, them to continue to work hard, be disciplined and loyal to the organization. Meanwhile, two senior members from among its ranks have retired after serving for a combined total of over 76 years. They are former Assistant Commissioner of Police AACP Richard Brown and former Superintendent of Police SOP Timothy Hazelwood. Brown's tenure as a police officer spanned over 37 years, while Hazelwood served for 39 years. Commissioner of Police Colin John is the officer officers and other ranks of the RSVG police force thanked them for their service and dedication to duty and wished them the rewarding and happy retirement.